Hello everybody. Now I'll discuss about the second part of uh, module 6 solid state deformation process. We have already discussed on friction, ultrasonic diffusion and explosive welding process. So these are the basically solid state joining or welding processes. So now the second part is related to the ball milling operation and friction consolidation. These two parts I will try to discuss in this particular module. Here the ball milling is basically a kind of uh, grinding techniques or grinding operation we can perform using some balls which is made of uh, hard balls basically and uh, that can be act as a grinding media and such in that cases using with the interaction of this uh, grinding media that means uh, this basically balls and and we try to when it is with the bulk material it will try to produce some kind of the this uh, powder basically uh, it forms or some small particles it fine particles it forms so actually it is passes through the interaction of the bulk modul modulus through impact some compression and friction these are the basically uh, these mechanisms involves to form the fine powders using the ball milling operations. So other you can the typical characteristics say we can say it is a kind of uh, solid state chemical reaction also happens at the room temperature and via mechanical energy because solid state uh, chemical reaction happens because when there is a formation of the balls new surface is exposed that surface is basically usually the sur uh, this surface energy is actually reduces for this uh, new surfaces and they uh, really act to some kind of the chemical reactions to happen so ready to perform the chemical reaction at this particular stress so therefore high energy ball mills facilitates the plastic deformation required for the cold, cold welding also because there is another uh, aspect associated with the ball milling operation because high energy applied by the in the ball milling operation using this ball which is impacted it actually try to plastically deform the material and when there is a large plastic deformation is associated with the small particles they readily bond together using the cold welding process. So these are the another aspect associated with the ball milling operations. Now there is another way uh, to for uh, the make the alloy system that is called the uh, mechanical alloying system. Uh, in this case mechanical alloying system it is a kind of powder processing technique and usually uh, started with the first started with the nickel based dispersion strength and uh, super alloy and which is basically application of the gas, gas turbine blades. So this uh, powder processing techniques but we can see the mechanical alloying begins with the blending of the powder is required. So what uh, we can first prepare the powder and then after that how this powder is basically uh, mixing on the uh, different kind of the powders and we can consolidate this powder uh, to make uh, one particular component. So blending of the powder, first powder processing uh, then uh, powder blending and then the proportion and the loading the mixtures to the mill with the grinding medium also which is common as the steel ball are usually used in the as a grinding medium that I mean to say that in the grinding medium is basically steel balls are used uh, to perform uh, all this operation. Now processing of the powders consists of the cold welding, fracturing, re-welding and a powder particle. So I see that there are three words we have used the cold welding, fracturing and re-welding usually happens associated when you try to process the powders using the in, in mechanical alloying system. In this case so powder is plastically deformed we know this is the in cold cold oiling process we simply deform the material at the room temperature and then they are bonding together. Uh, be, because of the application of the uh, some kind of the uh, load and which is in contact with the, uh, the surface to surface contact. So similar phenomena we can observe in a small particles here also. Now when there is impact load using the balls or say some amount of the load is there is a fracture happens from a big structure fracturing also happen of the particles so it being becomes more finer fracture and sometimes it also happening the the welded component can be maybe separated or fracture might happens and uh, but at the same time the rewelding also happen and because of the plastically individual plastic deformation of the uh, two particles or between the two particles now it actually happens this cold welding fracturing and rewelding is a cyclic manner and in case of the high energy ball and that will try to finally lead to the formation of the uh, new alloy so this metallurgy, the mechanical alloying is basically capable of synthesizing wide range of the equilibrium and non-equilibrium alloy phases. It is associated, mechanical alloying system is associated to produce some equilibrium, non-equilibrium phases in this particular case. Now here we start with the 
ball milling process so ball milling works on the principle of the impact and abrasion so here we see that uh, the in, in in this case uh, this coalition between the surface of uh, moving balls and material is usually happen so definitely when the moving ball uh, is always having some interaction with the with the surfaces so it is basically works in the principle of the impact and as well as the abrasion both are there so abrasion is basically coalition between both the particles and ball with the surface of the uh, surface surface of the mill so surface of the mill and the both the particles they can they between these two there might be some kind of the abrasion phenomena usually observed associated with this process so in this case the sequential steps involved while processing of the material we start with the first the initial phase we can say the initial phase we can follow the figure here powder particles flattened by the coalition of the ball so ball is basically interacting at the initial phase uh, such that powder particles are flattened by coalition of the ball the intermediate step the significant change occurs in the particle shape so continuously impacting of the ball with the material so particle shape usually changes at the intermediate stage so in this case usually the high speed with the centrifuging usually occurs uh, at, the, at this intermediate stage but in the low speed the initial state the usually speed uh, speed is low in this case now third final step we can see the final step is extremely deformed metastable structure is usually formed so deformed metastable structure and in this case critical spread with the cascading effect is there so critical uh, because in 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 this case the speed becomes usually more and it reaches the critical speed and cascading because of the cascading effect some kind of the deformed metastable state uh, structure is usually forms using the uh, using this this ball milling operation now in the ball mill basically consists of the we see that hollow cylindrical cell with the rotating about an axis okay. so we use the simple cylindrical cell which is rotated about an axis that can act as a equipment for the ball milling operation so in this case the optimum efficiency of the ball mill is basically able to reach when we consider the what is the critical speed it able to achieve using this particular geometry configuration of the cylindrical cell so here we can estimate the critical speed of the this uh, this operation at the, uh, which is uh, calculated n is equal to 1 by 2 pi square root of g by r minus r here capital r is the radius of the cylinder and small r is the average radius of the ball g is the gravitational force so from there we can simply estimate what can be the critical speed can be used or achieved using the ball milling operation but we can in this case we can also calculate what is the grinding efficiency the ability of the to perform the grinding operation using this balls and the, when it is interacting with the with the particle so the grinding efficiency a minus b by a into 100 a is the amount of material sieve before grinding and b is the amount of material in the sieve after grinding so this way we can simply calculate what is the the grinding efficiency associated with this process so here you can see that how in ball milling operation we say we consider the balls can be considered as a grinding medium and then uh, we can usually look into what is the how effectively the balls can be utilized and to measure the grinding efficiency for in this cases but if you want to achieve very good grinding efficiency of course we have to consider what is the critical speed can be utilized for a one particular the ball milling system so that critical velocity we already mentioned that critical velocity actually depends on the what is the radius of the cylinder and what is the average radius of the ball so both actually contribute what can be the critical velocity can be achieved using this ball milling uh, ball milling system now here you see that uh, this grinding medium we say the steel balls can be bigger balls can be act as a grinding media and a rotating direction of the mill so you can see the rotating it can be clockwise uh, or anti clockwise rotation depending upon the application and materials we see small small particles is finally formed so here you see the powder processing mechanism through the uh, ball milling operation so every time you can see that powders is basically in contact with the uh, big balls and then and it's uh, gradually the balls uh, is it can be it can be balls bigger the particles can become say smaller one but it follow the several mechanism we have already we will try to discuss the what are the different kind of the mechanism such that the particle size is reduced using the ball milling operation 
but before that what can be the parameters process parameters or process variables associated with this milling operation one is the feed rate so with enhancing the feed rate it is possible to reduce in the size of the parts so in this particular material so size of the parts can be reduced by increasing the feed rate because in this case when increasing the feed rate uh, that actually it is in the contact between the uh, grinding media to the particle can be less though usually the shorter in time so that is the very short time they are in contact when there is an increment of the feed rate second weight of the ball so ball milling operation we use the so many balls the weight of the balls is basically on discharging the ball with the heavy weight and the, then weight is heavy means we can use the fine product is achieved so fine particle size can be achieved when the the weight of the balls is much more so what reason for that things that increase in the charge weight so basically either utilizing ball materials of the high density or increasing the number of ball so basically if the heavy weight means we can produce the fine product so that there are two different ways we can increase the the weight of the ball so one is the just we use the high density material we can use the higher density material when the higher density material for the same volume the weight will also be more or other way we can increase the number of uh, balls also we can increase the by increasing the number of balls inside the, the chamber then we can increase the the weight of the the balls uh, effectively the effective weight of the balls can be increased but there must be some amount of the some minimum or maximum amount of the balls we can utilize or maximum volumes can be occupied with this within this uh, mill chamber so that of course that is the different uh, point of discussion but there must be some limitation on this thing because if you increase the number of balls too much of then interaction between the balls and all this thing will be redu uh, will be reducing so there must have some kind of the optimum values apart from this thing the hardened steel tool steel temper steel bearing steel these are the specific type of the materials we can utilize to manufacture the balls which is used in case of the ball milling operations now third point the parameters which is the known as the milling energy or milling speed so here is the kinetic energy of the grinding medium so we know kinetic energy of grinding media is half of m v square so you see the m is the mass of the ball and the v is the velocity of the grinding media so the we can easily calculate if of course either velocity is much more or mass is much more the kinetic energy of the grinding media will also be much more so here but in this case the by increasing the feed of the rotation of the mill so we can if we simply increase the rotation of the mill we can increase the this kinetic energy of the ball so that can be the kinetic energy will be much more than the we can produce the fine particles using the ball milling operation so other way but of course it is argumenting that the speed of the uh, uh, speed above the critical balls pin to the inner wall and not move forward to apply any impact force so of course we have to limit this uh, um, this uh, um, energy the milling energy such that it will be able to limit the critical energy um, of the ball so we have already calculated nc the critical energy of the ball we can reach so but certain critical up to cut critical energy uh, this is effective the increasing the kinetic energy of the balls but here hence the maximum speed must be less than that of the nc that means the less than that of the critical speed to get to gain that the this thing in that case is that there is a much space available for the movement of the the balls so that means maximum height it can achieve to create the maximum coalition with the with the, the with the particle so that's why we need to achieve that uh, certain this uh, speed speed should be uh, energy uh, sorry kinetic energy of the ball mill should be re reach in such a way that it should be uh, lower than that of the critical energy uh, in the uh, critical energy of the uh, grinding medium now there is other process variables which is uh, the type of the mill what type of the mill we can use in this particular case is that the selection of the mill depends what the type of the powder type what type of the powder what is the amount of the powder can to be mill what is the final composition we are looking for all can decides what can type of the uh, milling uh, mill we can we can choose using all these parameters then other parameter we measure it uh, for the milling operation which is the ball to powder weight ratio so in this case we see that ratio of the weight of the ball and to the powder ratio which is known as the bpr 
which is known also the charge ratio which is known as the charge ratio so this is another parameter because higher charge ratio results in the quick refinement of the crystalline size that means very quickly we can reach to the very fine particle size so in this case uh, therefore we have to this thing weight of the ball that that means is basically the much difference in the weight of the balls and the particles that will helps to very quickly achieve the very uh, fine particles for example ep spex mill in this case bpr that means the the uh, ratio of the weight to the powder ratio in this case it can reach up to 4 is to 1 to 30 is to 1 so for another uh, cases bpr it can be uh, the bpr can be 50 is to 1 into or it can raise up to 100 is to 1 so in this case so ratio is much more then it's more effective to very quickly produce the the fine particles using the uh, this so we need to measure this parameter during this ball milling operation the other is the process process control agent so there might be these agents are absorbed on the surface of the powder particles so basically to minimize the cold welding uh, so you observe that there is a plastic deformation is there between the particle also they can easily uh, uh, bond together in the which is known as the cold uh, cold welding operations or cold welding process but in this case if you use some kind of the agent such that on the powder particle surface particle uh, on the surface of the powder particle this it will reduce the the tendency of the cold welding during this processing this thing so because it actually uh, the cold welding is actually lower the surface tension to reduce the large plastic deformation so basically in this cases they avoid to uh, uh, to large plastic deformation using this particular agent but in this case we can calculate the energy required for this physical phenomena is basically e gamma into delta s so if the specific surface energy and delta s the increase in the surface area we can use the simply what is the amount of the uh, the, uh, the surface energy is required in, in this case and this particular is because based on that we can choose the the process control agents associated with the ball milling operations now next part is the selection of the grinding media for the milling process so selection of the grinding media we can see there are the several parameters to look into to select the the grinding media so here see that the efficient milling basically looking for the uh, powder particles proper choice of the nature size and the distribution of the grinding media is actually required so proper size that means what is the ball size what is the distribution of the ball size if there is a variable ball size we can use it or we can use the similar size of the balls within this so all can be decided based on the the very specific parameters for example the one is that specific gravity uh, specific gravity so commonly grinding media with the high density usually prefer led to the very fine products so uh, high density uh, the high density means very low volume we can expect the very high amount of the weight so it means that the high density material and since it can produce a higher kinetic energy of the balls and that actually brings the more impact to the the particles and such that this energy will transmit it and very easily we can we can form the find the very fine powders is possible to develop so that's why we need to measure the specific gravity of this particular material before choosing this as a the grinding media uh, in ball milling operation second is the initial feed size so initial feed size means the grinding media much larger than the powder particle size so that means definitely otherwise it will not be able to impact to transmit the uh, uh, the kinetic energy to fracture the the particle so therefore grinding media must be larger than that of the particle size that is always true and it is required to utilize grinding balls of the different size instead of the one type of to improve the efficiency it means that if we if you do the multiple different types of the size of the grinding media then it is more effective to improve the efficiency to produce the the fine particles in the ball milling operation third part is the hardness so definitely the medium grinding media must be harder than that of the the must be harder and as compared to the powder we are looking for the and then harder the grinding media laser will be the powder uh, contamination that means this uh, during the interaction so some parts can be transmitted from the harder uh, it can be very small 
amount, but there may be create some kind of contaminated to the freshly generated powder. So that's why that is a much difference in the hardness is mostly useful in this particular cases. So this is the one point. The third point is the pH value. So is the strong acid or basic slurry is react with the some uh, metallic silica. So we have to choose the look into the uh, pH value because in some cases the very strong acid or basic sl slurry present in this uh, ball milling operation they can react with the metallic. So accordingly we have to choose we, uh, we can choose the, the different medium in this case. Then decolorization some cases in the grinding media actually development of the coloring agent also while functioning. So color can be imposed in this cases. So hence it is not recommended for the coating in the white color. So that also that is the another phenomena decolorization might happen during the ball milling operation. So of course we have to choose in this cases so that uh, the this uh, this color from the grinding media may not uh, able to transfer to the this. Uh, particles to make it color uh, this to make it the different color. So that is why these are the parameters uh, we have to look before selecting the grinding media for any specific milling process. Now there might be some contamination during the milling operation. So contamination means that during the milling process of course always we can expect there is a fresh surface new surface is generated every time because there is a fracture of the along with the impact with the ball with the, the particles. So they will always create the new new surface with the in during the interaction. So there is a highly chances the contamination of the along the oxygen nitrogen and uh, that can be a real problem. So I mean to say that not only the uh, fresh atomic surface is generated uh, during this ball milling operation at the same time there might be some amount of the heat is also also generated. So both are favorable to readily react with the oxygen and nitrogen presence in the air. So that can be a uh, problem associated with this so that will bring some kind of the contaminated uh, particles powder particle. So in that case it is better to use the some kind of the gas protected. So we usually use the argon gas which is you know the inner type of gas environment we can perform this ball milling operation. The another point is that on performing the milling uh, with the liquid surface agent can reduce. So sometimes we can use the liquid surface agent they can actually reduce the surface uh, reduce the particle surface energy. So if you use the any kind of the liquid surface agent they will try to reduce the surface energy of the particles and in that cases they, they facilitates smaller particle sizes to form actually when there is a need the surface energy is basically reduces means it can um, we can uh, easily uh, make break uh, the create the another new surfaces because the, to create the another new surface we do not need much amount of the surface energy in this case. Consequently some of the particle absorbs in the sample as contaminated also at the same time. So there might be some contamination can readily happens also uh, in, 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 this, in this particular case. Now contamination occurs from the steel ball also. So sometimes the less this foreign as a foreign particles from the steel balls can be react can go into the, the this uh, in case of the, the fine uh, particles in this in during the ball milling operation. So in this case actually so this is usually happens uh, if milling media of the dissimilar material are actually utilized in this case. So this contaminations from the can be reduced if we use the the this grinding media is different material than dissimilar materials than what is the use for the uh, this uh, milling operation that the particle we are we are creating. So particle material and the balls in the milling operation or grinding media if they are dissimilar then it is, is it can we can less amount of the this foreign particles can be inducted in this particular case. So another point is the while milling there there will be a chance for the oiling of the powders on pot and the diffusion might take place also on the milling surfaces. So that is always there. So there is chances the this event for the this uh, grinding media can diffuse with the uh, particles and they can create some kind of the contamination with the uh, particles generated. So that can be another issues or problem associated with this thing. Now what can be the necessary steps to minimize the contamination? One is that these pots where we are performing uh, this uh, ball milling operation the pots must be designed in accordance with material required to mill. So pots can be designed what kind of the material we are handling in this particular uh, process. Then for example milling with sand 
see in this cases the processing with the high purity sand the quartz basically particles to remove stuck on the material so that material should not stuck in the in the in the, the milling media so grinding media this process if you want to produce very high purity so we have to think about what a uh, this can uh, that uh, the sometimes we can use the uh, this uh, um, the reduce the stuck the material should not stuck with the this thing that the grinding ball so in, in that cases it will always enhance the this uh, contamination of the particles usual occurs but sometimes you can utilize the acetone while the uh, milling operation that will protect to minimize the uh, contamination of the, the particle so basically, basically uh, the clean with acetone, it will clean try to clean the surfaces or uh, the other kind of the contaminants available with the particle so that's why using acetone during the milling operation can protect to minimize the uh, contamination now Mechanical alloying we are talking this is another part of this wall milling operation that is called the mechanical alloying usually happens in this case. So sequential steps involved in the mechanical alloying uh, process in this case initially powders are mixed in required proportions and that actually and loaded to the mill with the grinding media. So that also uh, in this case we use the mix the this the required proportion of the two different uh, elements. Uh, which you are bound, we create to some kind of the alloy and then it is put in the milling operation uh, the milling um, cavity and with the using uh, some grinding medium. So in this case process control agent is fit uh, to reduce the excessive cold welding of the powder particles. So in this case if the, ex the just try to avoid any kind of the cold welding we use the process control agent to just to reduce the effect of the cold welding of the powder particles. So third is the mill powder consolidated. So in this case is the milling powder consolidated into the bulk shape and subsequently heat treated to obtain the desired property. So in this case so uh, as simple as that uh, this operation we started with the multiple uh, elements mixed together then we try to avoid the cold welding to occurs during this process and finally we try to make it the consolidate to make a after consolidation then we make into a heat treated to obtain the desired properties and uh, which is the basic steps associated with the mechanical uh, alloying system. So raw materials for the mechanical alloying we use the raw materials utilized for this process commonly commercially available pure powders of metals alloy and the refractory component usually use the in the you can use as a in terms of the raw materials associated with the mechanical alloying system. So here powder particle size must be less than that of the grinding balls. So definitely the, the powder particle size should be lower than that of the this uh, grinding ball size and its particle size is actually reduces exponentially with the milling time. So over the time the particle size is actually uh, actually uh, particle reduces exponentially uh, in this case. So I mean to say that if this is the particle size so it reduces exponentially using the ball milling with respect to time t and this is the say particle size d. So in this case it actually reduces very uh, exponentially in this case. So addition of oxides, carbides we can add it in this mechanical alloying system oxides, carbides, nitrides or um, to the alloy. So these are the, the we can uh, add it but these are the referred to as the dispersion strength and uh, material. So actually this actually bring the strengthening effect by adding the oxides, carbides and nitrides and that strengthening mechanism here is the dispersion strengthening mechanism is usually follow to bring the strengthening uh, strength effect uh, in the in the uh, of the component which is using the mechanical alloying system. Sometimes you can use the cryogenic medium liquid nitrogen is also used to reduce the temperature of during the milling process which is known as the wet milling operation temperature milling uh, wet milling operation. So wet milling up in case of the wet milling of the particles are more suitable than in the dry to fabricate the fine products of the uh, of the molecules of solvent absorbed from the newly milled surface actually wet grinding of the particles is more suitable than the uh, than to the dry fabricate fine products. Because in this case the molecules of the solvent usually observed in the newly milled surface and subsequently lower their surface energy. So in this case this uh, 
solvent is usually observed on the mill surface and actually when solvent presents in the newly fresh surface this actually lowers the the surface energy so that's why it can uh, more suitable um, uh, to form the very fine particles uh, than to than the than particles form in the dry uh, dry condition to fabricate the uh, particles in this case now here mechanical analysis we can see that so we are just to try to mix for example metal a metal b then we use can add some intermetallic we can add some oxides also in the ball milling system so here we use the water cooled stationary tank water cooled stationary tank because just to uh, control the temperature generated during the operation and we use the gas sealing also just to protect uh, the inside the atmosphere just to the to avoid the contamination from the outside atmosphere now here you see the steel can the from the mechanically alloy powder so powder are basically mixed and they are they are bonding with respect to each other and then once make as a uh, consolidated in the solid component then we can we, uh, we can heat it the heat container so we place it in the so this is the the powder is consolidated and this powder is basically supply and here we follow some kind of the within the heated container and then we within the heated container when the powders are consolidated make a make a component uh, solid shape we need perform the extrusion process using the die so once we the perform the extrusion process then we follow the hot rolling operation so once it is the hot rolling which passes through the from extrusion to it passes through the hot rolling chamber so here we deform to take this particular shape basically we are compacting this to get a desired shape and which is more compacted way and finally it passes through the heat treatment chamber so after heat treatment uh, we can perform the this machining operation and then after machining operation we get the final product so basically over the sequence the step fabricating of the component fabricating of the component from the powder starting from the powder and that also we can get we in this cases we don't need the very specific alloy composition billet in the form of a billet it is available and from there we can not like that here we started with the process from the initial phase in the form of a powder and that different uh, powders we are mixing up different powder of course you need to follow certain ratio so some kind of the metallurgical compatibility should be maintained when you try to mixing the different powders so here powder consolidated and then we put it the take the safe in the extrusion chamber particular after that from the extrusion chamber we further do the rolling so basically rolling is basically try to apply the compressive load compact this uh, this uh, in this cases so it becomes more uh, the powders can be more consolidated to make a solid and after that we perform the heat treatment operations and once the heat treatment is done we can heat treatment so we can improve the properties of the component or some restore the ductility also during this process through the heat treatment process and once heat treatment is done then we directly convert it to the machining operation we can reach the uh, final product so this can be the uh, the one single step sequential step is fabricating the product is starting from the powder using the mechanical alloying route in this particular process now we see the mechanism of mechanical alloying system so mechanism we see that uh, we, if you try to look in the mechanism of mechanical alloying system is the what is the ball powder uh, coalition so ball powder coalitions here you can see in the consist of the blended powder is there grinding media is there and further subjected to the deformation so basically the loading the uh, this uh, initial stage loading the this powder the blended powder and then grinding media is there the is basically compacting here the grinding media and then we perform the deformation so in this cases the particles of the powder is basically flattened cold weld it can cold weld also it can fracture also and even it can re-weld it so all this mechanism is basically happens uh, simultaneously uh, this particular process or in the repeated manner also it, it may happens in this cases so uh, at the initial stage due to the coalition of the grinding ball ductile metal becomes flattened so ductile metals become flattened as well as the when it becomes flattened so it becomes this basically work hardening or strain hardening phenomenon is associated with that now after that when some point it may be subjected to some kind of the high amount of the plastic deformation so in this case the due to the severe plastic deformation we can see the surface area to the volume ratio is actually increases powder particle increases and simultaneously it might also rapture when it is crossing the 
this uh, fracture stress. So, here you see all this phenomena usually happens. It can the so apart from the cold welding of the powder, some powder particles may, may be uh, may be may also be coated using the grinding media also. So not cold welding also there, some plastic deformation also there, and fracture also there. All mechanism are there. Apart from the some the particles may also some point it can be coated on the grinding media or inner wall. That actually lead to the development of the very thin layer over the, uh, the uh, 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 development of the thin layer that actually protect the grinding media. Uh, from the wear and the tear, we can see that some, some the over the steel ball, so some kind of the thin layer is coating the some thin layer is coated and that actually protect this grinding media in this case. So this all phenomena is associated with this thing when there is a interaction between the ball and powder. Now, if you look at the intermediate stage of the alloying uh, processing in this stage, intermediate stage, what happens? The due to the increased amount of the cold welding. So, that means in the intermediate stage usually large amount of the cold welding usually occurs in this case. So, that means this readily two components can join here and also associated with the large number of crystal defects are also present in the intermediate stage. So, crystal defects for example, such as the dislocation also there definitely dislocation some kind of grain boundaries will be created and uh, lots of vacancies kind of the point defects also associated during this process. So, finally, is basically particle is converted to the convoluted lamellar type of the structure usually we can observe in the intermediate stage of the alloying. Uh, says here you can see the int intermediate set how the interdiffusion is there it creates the some kind of the dispersed that means with uh, the metal a and we, we add some precipitated phase also and metal b so precipitated phase the oxides they also added or some uh, oxide particles also there in this case and because of the interdiffusion uh, interdiffusion there might interdiffusion or diffusion also occurs and at the same time some metastable phase also created in this particular stage the initial intermediate stage of the alloying processing. But final stage of the alloying processing it looks like that is converted to the this lamellar is basically converted to the very finer and convoluted structure and uh, the final composition of the part is almost like what was the before starting of the uh, blending of this component. So, so in, in this case the, it reached up to that point and this is referred to as the steady state. So, when it is reaching the almost initial uh, structure uh, what was the before starting of the blend then we can say that it is this the steady state situation. So, at this stage we can see the micro hardness of the alloy achieves the saturated level and due to the presence of the higher amount of the strain energy associated with this process. Here see the concentration of the metal A, metal B is mixing and the dispersion means this basically the dispersion strengthening mechanism is there. In this case the particles basically disperse throughout the structure uh, because of the ball milling operation here and we can use uh, then it can reach to the final stage. So, saturated level of the this hardness is rich in this particular structure. So, these are the the mechanism of the different mechanical alloying system. So, mechanism alloying system there is a past also what we can there is a evolution of the uh, particle size. So, how particle size actually changes or what the status of changes of the particle size during the mechanical alloying process. One is the of course, there is always there is a newly created sur surface will always be there when there is a newly created surface they can readily weld because the readily weld together and uh, together in the weld condition and that actually try to increase the particle size when there is welding bonding together then it actually increases the particle size. So, that phenomenon is always there. So, therefore, at the initial stage of the milling process powder particles really, really remaining same soft remain soft and on it utilizing ductile to ductile and or ductile to brittle material uh, combination this case. But in this case further continuing the deformation the particles is actually the work hardened and the fatigue occurs. So, for further deformation we just plastically deform the material that it becomes work hardened and up to certain point it becomes it is a fracture uh, thing usually happens in these cases. So, therefore, there since there is a continuous impact of the ball grinding ball. So, in this cases structure of particles get actually refined every time. So, when it reach the work hardened and then fracture it becomes more fine particles is actually uh, created. So, and, be, and that also happened because there is a continuous impact for the, the grinding medium in this case. So, on milling for the certain duration over the period of the time we can see the reach that uh, after certain time it reach the steady state situation is achieved. So, in this case 
the balance between rate of the cold welding is actually balanced and that tends to increase the average particle size. So, basically uh, we can say that up to optimum uh, time it reach the, the fine particles. If you allow more time then it will try to increase the uh, particle size also. So, therefore, in this case there is there are so many defects are there the vacancies, dislocation, stacking faults, structure and there is an increased number of the grain boundaries because there is a fine particles are created and at the same time all these cases they increase the probability of the diffusivity of the solute elements in the atom, uh, solute elements along with the matrix chances of the diffusion is basically increases because of the large amount of the defects usually associated with this process. However, time required to form a particular structure in any mechanical alloy system depends on the initial particle size and the type of the milling. So, basically overall you can see that thing. So, this uh, particular structure is uh, want to produce it actually depends on the what was the initial size of the particles as well as the what type of the milling operation. So, milling process we are following the it actually mainly governed by these two parameters. Here you can see that mechanical of the allowing this thing we see the milling energy is increasing the and the size of the particle uh, in this case uh, over the milling time refine with the milling time we see the rate of refinement enhanced with increasing the milling. So, rate of the uh, rate of the refinement with increasing the milling energy rate of the refinement will increases to increasing the ball to the powder weight ratio, but the ball to the powder weight ratio and the uh, lowering the temperature is actually rate actually decreases. So, that is why these are the effect of the this uh, with respect to the milling time and the particle size. We see the over the milling time gradually it reaches to the, the lower size of the particles, but this actually accelerate the effect the, the this uh, milling time or the refine rate of the refinement of the particles depends on this parameters. Now, mechanical alloying elements can occur in the different different combination. For example, the ductile to ductile product is possible, ductile to brittle product also it is possible and as well as the brittle to brittle product uh, we, it is possible. We try to look into this thing different different combination one is the ductile to ductile products it means that fabrication of this product the ductility for the one material can be at least 15 percent of the ductility need to achieve for the alloying. So, we choose the material in such way that at least 50 percent ductility is there. So, then in that cases 50 percent ductility is there means in this case the we can consider the combination the interaction between the ductile to ductile product. Now, mechanism that means in, in mechanical alloying system we, we try to always mix the two components. So, for example, metal A and metal B we are male the try to mixing this. So, metal A and B should achieve at least 15 percent ductility then we can say we can analyze this thing considering the ductile to ductile material interaction. So, mechanism of alloying through this mode involves two, two ductile components basically based on we are assuming there is a two ductile components and we do the analysis for the, the interaction between these two. So, at the initial state ductile parts get flattened we see and the, it becomes flattened we, we interaction of the ball millings and then it try to reach the platelet shape and some cow is the micro forging of the ball millings might happen in this case. So, there is a flattened particles is there. So, we try to go through the plastic deformation they can easily cold weld and try to transform to the composite type of the lamellar type of the structure it will try to create. So, metal A and metal B becomes more flattened and then use they cold weld together and they create some kind of the lamellar structure. Now, further if you wait for the further timing in this cases the composite powder is basically work hardened if you allow further milling time over the time it becomes further deformed then it becomes work hardened and work hardened are reaching up to certain point it breaks it and breaks it and because work hardening after work hardening it actually losing the ductility and it tends to becomes the more brittle. So, once it is brittle and sufficient amount of the load is there then it breaks at this particular point. So, therefore, it creates the very coarse and the fine particles convoluted structure due to the random cold welding the equiex uh, try to reach the uh, the equiex kind of the structures so, equiex particles it will it will create. Now, alloy formation occurs at this stage due to the reduced diffused distances. So, that means it is basically inter 
lamellar spacing is because of the interlamellar spacing is reduces reduce diffuse distance so what is the diffusion to occurs between these two reduce distance and that is basically known as the interlamellar spacing and at the same this is one cause alloy formation there is another so many enhanced lattice defects also lattice defect density also increases because there is a so much of further mechanical working is done on the particles so it actually increases the lattice defect and finally heating effect arises because of the milling operation so all these matters here one is the this uh, the reduced in, uh, diffuse distances then enhance lattice defects because of the mechanical energy here and the, at the same time heat generation also helps uh, in this case so alloy formation is basically the factors of all these three facts now when hardness and particle size reach up to the steady state uh, point in these cases and or i can say the saturation stage and further milling on the the true further milling on the true alloying at the atomic level results in the transformation of the solid solution it means that when particle size hardness or particle size reach to the saturation state but if you till further allowing the milling operation to occurs in that in that cases it basically transformation from one phase to another phase or transformation of the solid solution as transformation of the uh, solid solution amorphous and some other intermetallic phases it is basically it basically transform to in the different different uh, phases now if we analyze suppose metal a and b are the two different one is ductile another is the betel metal so how what they are interacting to form the mechanical alloying system in this case usually uh, one uh, ductile betel means one cases we usually the oxide dispersed strength and particles use it lie in this category the we can say that is the oxide particles so which is oxide particles usually brittle in nature and other and are dispersed in the the matrix so basically if there is a matrix so uh, oxide particles is basically brittle in nature and the it actually dispersed throughout the structure usually that purpose we use the uh, in this case we use the conventional oxide particles in this particular case so that we consider as a brittle material in this cases and other cases there is a ductile particles are also there so in this case the initial step ductile particles is basically flattened get flattened well and ball powder because of the ball and powder coalitions uh, and then in this cases but brittle oxides is basically breaks into the fine particles more fragmentation is there for the brittle oxides but ductile part particles is try to elongate uh, try to this thing the plastically deform in happens usually the ductile particles during the uh, interaction of the ball now with the progress of the milling time these particles uh, occluded by the ductile constituents and the trapped in this uh, in this particle so particles means basically the these oxide particles now further milling the ductile powder is get work hardened and at the particular uh, becomes work hardened and transformation of the lamellar to the uh, refined structure so when duct this uh, ductile particles is there and that will try to the lamellar structure to try to produce and then after that uh, it further work hardened it basically becomes brittle and then fracture make it the very fine structure now continue milling the lamellar further get refined structure and inter interlamellar spacing actually reduces and the very fine brittle particles is uniformly dispersed throughout the structure so here you can see the lamellar structure is formed this is the oxide particles are there by red mark here the lamellar structure is elongated with the further application of the loads and then uh, kind of uh, oxide particles is further becomes more finer and finer and finally at the end stage this oxide though laminated structure the ductile part is laminated and the oxide particles are basically the reinforced in the throughout the uh, structure so this way we can say that ductile to brittle they create they create this this kind of the structure here mentioned in this particular figure now brittle to brittle products in this case both are brittle particles the both are get fragmented while milling and the particle size reduce sequential in this case because both are brittle with the further interaction impact the particle size uh, reduce very gradually so finally it is the very small size uh, particles but further we cannot reach for the further reduction is not possible of the size of the particles so hence powder particles behave in the ductile nature which is referred as the limit of the comminuation so limit of the combination is basically the reduction of the solid particle size 
by fracturing or by through grinding operation. So, there is a always try to reach one particular uh, size of the particles. So, further reduction is not possible. So, now on achieving the after achieving the proper mixing of the two components, then further milling operations does not make in the very refinement rather you do try to allow diffusion to occurs. So, therefore, diffusional process. So, that means after reaching the optimum particle size, very fine particle size, if you till on allowing the milling operation, then diffusional process becomes active at, at this stage. So, here mechanism to contribute the transfer of the metal during the processing of the brittle, brittle parts here is like that hydrostatic stress state in the powder facilitates by the ball milling. It creates the hydrostatic state of the stress in the by the facilitated by the ball milling operations. Of course, there is a micro deformation in the defect free volumes can be there. Surface deformation is associated with that and the local rise in the temp temperatures. All these kind of the phenomena we can observe when try to brittle to brittle uh, components. Metal A is the brittle and metal B also brittle. The interaction usually happens in the mechanical alloying system. Now, there is another part which is known as the uh, mechano chemical ball milling. So, is the basically we use the mechanical system as well as the chemical processing together we see the mechanochemical synthesis process is in this in this cases for the processing of the uh, powder this case here in this case in which the chemical reaction is there and transformation of the phase usually occurs on the application of the mechanical energy. So, we observe the chemical reaction to occurs with the application of the mechanical energy in this particular process. So, here mechanochemical processing MCP has been usually prepared in the high energy mill. So, in the high energy mill we use this kind of the uh, process things and uh, it is not associated with the low energy milling operations. But how it works? We can say the uh, mechanosynthesis analysis take in the following the very basic reaction process. One is the for example, metallic oxide MO and the reduct reductant is the R. React with separate the mechanic uh, the metal part and E is the RO. So, here you see that in this case that these are the solid state reaction which is uh, consist of the product phase uh, at the interface of the uh, component uh, phase. We can see what the reaction happens in the figure 1. So, but the reaction usually occur the formation we can see from the reaction there is a formation of the metal M takes place at the interface and M O and R is the other way. We can go back to the figure 1. So, here you can see that uh, M O plus R is basically it is separate the metal part and RO it creates in this case. So, here you see that the R is created here and the it is a uh, in the metal oxides MO and the reductant R in the mechanochemical reaction usually happens in such way that that in the product phase M and RO at the interface. So, M and RO is basically M and RO is basically present at the interface and R is the outside. So, from the interface between the reactants and the uh, further prevent further reaction takes place because R is C uh, in this case the M and RO take the boundary part and the it actually try to reduce the further reduction with the, uh, the reductant in this particular case. So, since uh, reactants are not in contact, so it stops the reaction in this particular point of time. Now, if you look into the characteristic of this particular mechanochemical reaction is that the enhancement of the product phase consists of the diffusion of the atoms further of the reactant phase that primarily control the reaction rate is basically I see that this uh, since there is a it protect uh, this, uh, this uh, RO that uh, M mixture of M plus RO the further in contact with the reductant. So, therefore, further reaction is main kinetics is basically depends on the, the diffusion based process. Now, mechanically allowing subsequently enhance the reaction kinetics which is repeated cold oiling process and the fracture of the powder after work hardening particles the contact area by continually bringing the new surface. So, here mechanical allowing the role of the mechanochemical process the mechanical allowing is the role is that in this case it will follow the same role what we have discussed earlier also. So, making the cold, promise of the cold welding for the deformation 
fracture of the powder and try to bring the new surfaces here. Now, depending on the condition of the milling, two extremely different kinetics are possible uh, in this particular process. One is the reaction may approach to the very small while each coalition leads to the gradual transformation. So, here you see that the enthalpy of the reaction is usually if it is very high, then self propagating high temperature synthesis usually uh, takes place. So, if the enthalpy of the reaction is very high. So, in this case we see the ductile brittle components combination this thing in this case microstructural morphology is basically dispersion of the brittle oxide particles in the ductile matrix. So, brittle uh, so ductile brittle comp components definitely that uh, the ductile matrix we can find out the brittle components brittle oxide particles okay, in this case and during the mechanical alloying of the mechanochemical process in this case powder is close contact with the milling tools we can see the powder is very close contact with the milling tools hence that actually try to generate the heat and lost partially to the ball and the environment. So, heat is generated, but at the same time there is a losing of the heat uh, to the ball and the environment. So, herefore, the preheating of the part is sometimes required to initiate the combustion reaction. So, in this case, uh, some preheating is required in this case to initiate the combustion reaction. Actually, once with the particles is there, with the both oxides and reductant are hard and brittle. Therefore, they uh, can create some kind of the agglomerates that means the binding of all these things they develop uh, and uh, combustion uh, in this case but in this case combustion reaction will not be initiated in this particular case. So finally uh, we try to reach the removal the unwanted part from the product which is uh, difficult because of the high reactivity of the metallic phase associated with the nano crystalline grain. So, if there is a formation of the nano crystalline grains, it sometimes it is very difficult to uh, this removal of this unwanted component. So, hence in the byproduct phase can be separated by leaching in the dilute acid or the hot water we can use the byproduct uh, component using this mechanochemical ball milling operation. So, here point is that and there is if there is a nano crystalline grains are produced and they can it is very difficult to segregate because we know in case of the nano crystalline grains their surface area the volume ratio is usually very very high. So, that is why uh, they the other way with the byproduct phase can be removed simply following some kind of the hot water or dilute acid we can utilize in this process. Now, mechanochemical ball milling operations in this case we see that the effect of the attributes of this mechanochemical processing one is that the process parameters of the milling of course having some significant role on the nature of the kinetics and the product phase. So, here some kind of the optimum can be achieved uh, for the initiation of the chem chemical reaction. So, optimum condition should be achieved, but you have to look into the different aspects in this the mechanical ball milling operation. One is the what can be the milling temperature. So, if both reactants and the are in the solid state and the enhanced diffusivity at higher level of the temperature is usually occurs. So, diffusion might be much more if, if there is an increase of the temperature, milling temperature is much more that means that will try to promote the diffusion to high amount of the diffusion to occurs. And at the same time increases the kinetics of the reaction and the shorter time required for the completion of the reaction. So, when diffusion you are accelerate the diffusion process. So, therefore, you are basically increasing the kinetics of the reaction at the at the same time when there is increase kinetic rate of the kinetic um, reaction in that case the time required will be less that is the effect of the temperature. Now, if the ball to powder weight ratio if the ball to powder weight ratio the time required for the reaction to complete reduced and enhancing the this ball and the powder um, this BPR as the ignition time decreases with increase the average frequency of the coalition. So, if the, the ignition time decreases with increasing the average very high frequency coalition increase in that case the ignition time is actually decreases and it actually influenced by the ball by uh, powder weight ratio. Process control agent can be act also uh, can be added also in this case is some additive restrict the uh, inter particle cold welding that is the purpose of using the process control agent which actually uh, lead to the coalition lead to the reduced reaction rate. So, this also the 
if you use the process control agent, this is basically reducing the reaction range. The grinding ball diameter, in this case, the ignition time for combustion reaction reduced in increasing the ball diameter. So, ignition time is reduced. In this case, frequency of collision is much more. So, we can reduce the, the time that uh, this uh, ignition time uh, for the can be reduced using the uh, effect of the this uh, ball diameter. Now, using all these things, so there is a one uh, when you try to analyze the ball milling operations. So, here we can see there is a one mechanism is basically we observe that is called the friction consolidation is in the process. So, this process associated with the friction consolidation. So, consolidation is basically is the process of enhancing the mechanical strength of material obtained from particle to particle interaction. So, in this case uh, the consolidation is basically understand particle to particle interaction the increasing the mechanical strength through the particle to particle interaction. Now, what are the different process of the consolidation? So, consolidation is the one is the cold welding. So, we just contact the between the two component and the bonding together. So, this is one way of consolidation of the two particles which is observed in the ball milling operations. So, when particles of the two surfaces are in close enough in that cases therefore, so that their free surface energy is available there to react or to make the bonding between these two and that actually creates some kind of strong attractive forces that makes them to bonding or we can know this is known as the cold oiling operation. So, uh, in this case uh, the we can observe in the way the consolidation occurs. Then fusion bonding also there. So, fusion bonding can bring some kind of consolidation when there is the interaction between the powders also. So, in this case the multiple point of contacts are there in the application of the load that actually try to make reach the melting point at this particular very localized position. So, that localized position try to bonding together through in the form of a uh, fusion bonding usually happens at this particular point. So, now on removal when the load is removed then solidification occurs takes place and then mechanical strength en enhances. So, this way the consolidation usually happens either by cold welding process or consolidation might happen either in the by fusion bonding operations associated with the, uh, uh, the ball milling operations. Now, what are the mechanism of the consolidation uh, mechanism? So, here one is the mechanism is the mechanical theory. So, best it takes place between the irregular shape of the particle. We can theory that if there is a shape of the irregular then the, as the particle go to deformation with the interaction of the balls, the particle boundaries at the edge of the boundary bond formation takes place. So, the interlocking will be easier if the, the irregular shape of the particles interact interact with respect to each other and the with application of the any kind of the mechanical loading in this particular case. So, they they can readily readily bond the this uh, bond formation can takes place here. And then another mechanism is that con friction consolidation. So, that is why this chapter is basically associated with the consolidation and the uh, friction consolidation. So, the friction con consolidation mechanism is that in the, in the first stage of the alloy powder is basically manufacture that we know the first we make the powder is manufactured through mechanical alloying by mechanical alloying using the either you can use the dry we can use the high energy and the milling process and which is the attractor uh, which is known as the attractor in this case. So, once you make the powders is manufactured with mechanical alloying and the second stage is that the consolidate of the mechanical alloying powder by friction. So, when by friction or which is also the is achieved by the hot isostatic pressing which is known as the friction consolidation. So, the friction consolidation overall I can say like that uh, first create the mechanical alloy and what way these uh, particles are bonding and through the mechanism of the friction or and or practically by applying the hot isostatic press the bonding of the particles is formed. So, that is the bonding through the friction mechanism that is which is known as the friction consolidation. So, what are the different component of the frictional force during the consolidation is actually active in the when you try to explain the mechanism of the friction consolidation. So, one is the, the mechanism of the inter interparticulate friction and another is the die wall friction both kind of the frictional mechanism are active here. So, interparticulate friction is the occurs basically particle to particle contact friction is there and express in terms of the coefficient of the interparticulate friction. So, we represent in the form of a interparticulate friction when the particle to particle friction. 
so more significant at lower applied load so this mechanism is basically more important or more active when the load is less and in this case materials utilized for reducing this effects are known as the uh, glidants or colloidal silica can be utilized in these cases just to reduce the particle to particle uh, friction now dry dye wall friction means in in these cases that at the wall the obtained from the material being pressed against the dye wall and the try to move down it so at the dye wall then there is a must be friction is active in these cases and the this component of the friction is basically with the dominating when the higher amount of the external load is there and express in terms of the mu w so that means dye wall friction basically wall friction is there during the consolidation with the application of the hot static ice uh, pressing at that time the wall friction is basically we consider in this cases uh, and we can represent the coefficient of friction the dye for the between the wall and the this uh, particle so sometimes you can do the lubricant also so the, that design for reducing the component forces in such a that it has very low shear strength and the strong cohesiveness is achieved in this particular uh, process so we see that interparticular friction is mainly one part and there, there is a die wall friction is there and both actually uh, the mechanism is basically associated with the this friction consolidation mechanism in the in the wall milling uh, operation now we consider one case study on the friction consolidation of in colloid uh, alloy powder so it's a very specific type of the uh, alloy which is known the iron chromium and aluminum alloy and uh, ods powders we can use it's in these cases at consolidated through the friction consolidation and its impact is analyzed and compared with the conventional material so we try to look into why to the friction consolidation mechanism is basically is investigated for the iron chromium aluminum alloy system so in this case uh, consolidation process first we obtain the sample from the ball milling so we create the sample from the ball milling operation and subjected to the torsional straining under the hydrostatic loading so torsion means we can apply the torque and then along with the compressive force that means with the application of the hydrostatic stress, of stress the powders are basically interacted uh, the, between these two elements so key components for the friction friction and cons consolidation is basically in this case we use the stationary billet chamber and one case we use the rotating die these two are there and chamber is fabricated material the chamber fabricated material is basically in conal 7 to 0 super alloy you use, use it and rotating die made up of tungsten uranium so basically these two different material we can use in this case rotating die and the this billiard chamber cases and in this case definitely when we apply the torque as well as the compressive force over the powder particles there therefore heat will be generated due to the friction and at the same time plastic deformation also contributes some amount of the heat generation of the material and then plastic allowing the plastic deformation it to try to try to softening the uh, material uh, in this case so softening the material become plastic deformation we are assuming that plastic deformation becomes easier with the application of the heat so heat is basically softening the material now because of the undergoing rotation and the compression both is there the gap between the particles are reduced so we can see so two different types of loading is there compressive load as well as the rotational load or torque because of the application of the torque is basically gap between the particles are reduced and finally these soft particles because of the generated heat they actually cold welded and after cold welding means basically they are consolidated in this particular case so finally refined gain structure with the low porosity have been achieved to fabricate ods material dispersed strength material actually in, in this case oxide dispersed strength material is possible to achieve and in this case uh, we can get the refined grain structure and porosity uh, with the even for the low porosity we can observe in this particular case now in this case wider range of the sizes present at the different location we see we can observe the wider range of the grain size different locations within the friction consolidated sample as compared to the conventional material so here you see the conventionally consolidated and here is the friction consolidated so you can see the conventional consolidated there is a wide range of the 
the particle size are different we are getting but friction consolidated we can achieve only one very low number of particles in this case only if we compare this two we can one cases we can get the only one particle uh, with the friction consolidated but other cases we can do the several particles having of the different size so in this case it is possible to achieve the perception of uh, of yttrium aluminum garnet kind of uh, material we, we know yttrium aluminum garnet we can use the the laser source we can utilize this material so it is possible to achieve and that actually helps for enhancing the material uh, strength by friction consolidation but that was absent in the conventional material so you mean to say that that when you try to make the make the component in this case using the friction consolidation process in this case the it enhances the mechanical strength of the of the uh, finally uh, fabricated component but as compared to the conventional material so here you can see the util utilization of the friction consolidation when you try to handle the uh, powder particles and of course using the friction consolidation we can we can find out is the better properties of the material and the, which is usually from from the uh, powder particles uh, of this particular for here is the example of the yttrium garnet uh, aluminum garnet can be produced by the friction consolidation and which is wide application we, we can find it in the laser system and even nuclear system also we can use uh, this particular material so this is but this can be manufactured using the friction consolidation uh, methods so here just end this particular module uh, thank you very much for your kind attention